Hello, hello, hello. Welcome on this Sunday morning to Lotus World, your channel. Today we have Gary Verma to talk with us and uh, what he is, what his thoughts are. Um, so over to you, Gary. Uh, introduce yourself to our viewers and welcome on show. Sorry for that. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, thanks, Vipul, uh, to you and uh, a big thank you to Lotus World as well, uh, which is uh, helping uh, the community uh, to take our voice to the bigger audience, you know, uh, specifically uh, in this world where, uh, you know, um, a pandemic is going on and people are mentally stressed as well. So uh, I think you guys are doing a great job, Lotus World, where uh, we you. can take our voice to uh, the public. Yeah, thank as you said myself, I'm uh, Gary Verma. Um, I work in an IT company as a profession. Uh, I came to Australia in '96 uh, as a student, and, you know, as a st doing studies in in IT. And uh, since then, you know, uh, I've done my double masters, and I have worked for many IT companies. And during my journey, I have learned a lot as well, you know, to do a social service as well. So I said, uh, by profession in IIT. I'm married, happily married, uh, with the two uh, beautiful young daughters. Um, uh, happily married, and uh, that's a big motivation for me. And uh, socially, I'm very, very active, uh, helping many, many not-for-profit organizations to do their charity work and, and social work. All right. Uh, what, what brought you to Australia? Yeah, as I think everyone else, uh, to be true, um, I did my bachelor's in, in India, a bachelor of science. Then I was pursuing my law degree in, in India. I completed the first year of my law degree when, you know, um, I thought, you know, I want to do something else in, in life. Um, and then I thought I would do master's degree. And that time, I think Australia was not even very well known in, in uh, our circles back in India. Everybody was trying to go to U.S. Mm. So I thought Australia is beautiful because I used to love, I love cricket, you know, first of all. And I've seen, you know, early morning, I used to wake up and India used to come to Australia. And I've seen Australia is a beautiful city, beautiful people and very friendly people, uh, very welcoming people. And then I thought, OK, that's one aspect. I love cricket so I can go there. And then second thought in my mind was I want to also do something in my life, you know, become a... a entrepreneur or get a good job in IT with my higher education. So I got an admission in a university uh, in Brisbane uh, in 96, basically, and doing my master's in information system. So, so that was the main reason I arrived in a second year to my uh, master's in higher education. Right. Um, tell us a little about your starting uh, life or starting journey or the start of the journey here in Australia. How was it and what was the learning and what message would be to people out there who come and how their initial stage or initial journey should be managed? Absolutely, absolutely. I think a yeah, very, very good question, people. Uh, as said, as any, anybody else, uh, you know, uh, their dreams as well. Uh, I was good in, in study that time. I good study now as well, but maybe a uh, little bit of uh, you know uh, age factor now. I can still do degrees. <laughs> uh, so as everybody else, their dream people. You know, when people come here, they come here. They're thinking they will get settled straight away. They make they'll make money. But I think at that time, my aim was to do study and, and most likely go back to India as well, if I got a decent job back in India uh, during those days. So when I arrived in Australia, you know, uh, whatever dreams uh, people told us back in India, I think that wasn't the case, uh, which means you can't simply go and, and, and uh, get a job straight away. So as any international student, there were struggles uh, in the beginning where uh, we were working hard to get a part-time job as well, was struggling to be true, to pay the bills, pay the rent and living cost, and specifically uh, to put food on the table, you know. And I wasn't good in cooking as well, so there was a second struggle, you know. And um, a very hard way I learned how to cook um, mm -hmm. during my uh, university days. And the struggle was, you know, study every morning, go to university, come home, look for a job, and then again, you know, cook food. Not many friends were there that time as well. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, to adopt to a new country and a new culture was a, was a big uh, task as well. With God's grace, um, you know, with positive attitude, we have learned uh, a lot and we made a lot of good friends as well. 
and my you know feedback to or my request to community who is coming here now and anyone who wants to come here is if somebody is showing you greener pastures uh, without any hard work that's not the case i, I will say uh, you know don't fall for that if your intention is genuinely want to study or want to do a business here or want to do anything which is a you know want to in your passion then definitely this, this is the country to come and, and uh, build your dreams yes yes uh from your answer few takeaways quickly positive attitude learning Absolutely. hunger for learning uh checking the reality before making a move and Absolutely. keeping a positive mindset and building a little bit of network of like minded people absolutely vipul you are you, you spot on uh, i think my attitude is is uh, half glass full remember uh, this is a very you know tough situation as, as we all know uh, this coronavirus pandemic goes going on so you know it's up to you you want to take it in a negative way you want to take it in a positive way if you have a positive attitude in life if you see the glass always half full or, or maybe you know see how you want to make it full further as well you know then you go a long way uh, all your mental stress and your toughness will go away you will be happy uh, and you survive and you will also able to help others as well even your positive uh, positive attitude yeah uh when when you landed and in, in that initial journey i'm pretty sure you would have made few friends uh out of those friends there might be few of them who are still very good friends with you is that the case uh, absolutely absolutely uh, people uh, i think very very good point i think i was very young that time um, you know when i arrived here just finished my bachelor's in india and i came here for master so very young and so i didn't make a lot of friends in university all those friends have gone somewhere in in their career in different countries some are in this country i'm in touch with a few but there are few people who are not there with me in my university or with my you know class but i met them during my social interaction like indian my indian people or like my people who helped me out a lot as well in my journey uh, to settle down in brisbane so uh, there are four or five family friends who are you know my brothers elder brother like 10 years elder to me and uh, they're still in touch with me and then whenever they go to india they go to my parents and when i go to india i go to their parents and look after each other and they live in brisbane are living in melbourne i, I moved to melbourne in 98 so we still have that loving relationship where we talk to each other regularly and still support each other uh, as and when the situation arises so this love bonding is still there i can never forget that you know uh, they helped me in my tough time yeah yeah yeah, yeah. again again a message uh, build relationship maintain it help as much as you can two way bridge um that's that's the way to move forward and and Absolutely. live as a cohesive uh, integrated community Absolutely. um yeah and 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 in say after studies in your career path uh how was the journey or how is the journey so far yeah uh once i finished my a uh, master's degree in in uh, griffith university in lisbon uh luckily uh, with god's grace i got a break and i said i work for a company you know big it company german company who specializes in erp software and enterprise resource planning so i got a break uh, that time to uh, the job and i moved to melbourne uh, with that job and i worked in a very big company called ibm that time so i worked for ibm for a couple of years then i worked for a company called deloitte and they were consulting and then i worked for an indian company uh, called satyam computers which you know is called uh, tech mahindra mm-hmm. after tech mahindra i joined sap as well as sap australia uh, as of now working in sap so journey was pretty good uh, to be true and uh, i got a, a decent uh, job uh, which which can put food on the table and i'm always uh, thankful to god and i'm always thankful to my family and friends who supported me and uh, as long as you're healthy you got a job and that job is so flexible which enables you to do more for the community yep. and which enables you to do help others you know yep. uh, that uh, work life balance is very key so i'm i'm very uh, honored uh, to be working in a company which, which encourages uh, social question and uh, corporate social responsibilities as well amazing amazing um now studies are done your career path has been decent with a flow uh, i'm pretty sure during all this journey you would have 
contributed or given or done beyond your uh, a boundary, like like the giving, literally giving back a little, little to people near and dear or known, unknown. Like somebody helped you, you would have also helped. Uh, did the journey start uh, right since the inception or in between towards some sort of social work? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think very, very good question, people. And uh, as I said, you know, during my student life, uh, most people, you know, um, from our, you know, uh, migrant background, they do face difficulties if you're not very, very well aware with the local rules and if you're not very well off in financial point of view as well. So yes, I did have a, a struggle in 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 my student life, and there are a few friends who who went beyond and helped me, which put your know, tears in my eyes as well during that time. An unknown person. Uh, there was a classic example where you know I I landed in Brisbane, and um, one week gone, and I wanted to go to a, a religious place, you know, to to pay my offerings. Somebody gave address and on that road, you know, please go, and there's a Religious place there, so I thought, okay, fair enough. I will go there, and I went there and I got the bus, and uh, I had no clue the road is like six kilometers long, and yeah, so we, we thought road streets are normally in a few hundred meters, but uh, I wasn't aware. So I called a religious place and saying I'm an interested student and I want to come and pray my offerings and I want to meet people as well. So uh, such a good Samaritan, you know, the people who the person who picked up the phone. He's saying, where are you? I said, look, I'm standing here next to this, this petrol station. And the gentleman told me, please stay there. I'll come and pick you up, you know. So the gentleman drove from a religious place, and he drove almost six kilometers just to pick me up wow. uh, and, and take me to the God's place, you know, the religious place there. And that was a wonderful gesture, and I can't forget that. And uh, after prayer was over, after we had our bandara and langa, and that gentleman dropped me to my home as well and gave me his number. Gurpreet, if you need anything in, in future, just call me. So that, you know, gesture is still there in my heart. That triggered me, okay, if somebody can help me when I'm in need, why mm. can't I do it, you know? Yes. So once I got a job, uh, I moved to Melbourne. I also started, you know, playing my part uh, to give back to society a little bit. Mm. At that time, I was living in CBD. So uh, I, I thought I would start helping international students. Mm. I faced difficulties. And uh, during that time, if anyone gives me a reference saying, please go to Gary, and uh, if you want temporary accommodation for a week or two weeks, I used to have a two-bedroom flat at that time, and I used to live alone, single that time, so I used to give my accommodation uh, a room for one week, two weeks, uh, free of cost, during that time, just to help somebody settle down, you know, in their life. Sometimes, you know, a one week of stay with politeness and guidance, okay, you, you can do this, you can do this, you go there for university, you go there for your jobs, you go there for your bus pass, you go there for your, you know, uh, certificate. It helps enormous to be true, anybody who is arriving from overseas on the day one. I think that would lay a good foundation in their starting point of journey in this country and can be a good memory and cherish it for the way you have that experience of somebody drove six kilometers, picked you up and dropped. That will always be in your mind and it will give you a positive uh, thought always to kind of help people and do the same Absolutely. thing to the newcomers. Great. Um, other than your family, like family would, would or will or is normally the source of inspiration for all of us. Outside the family, who is your source of inspiration? Yeah, as I said, you know, you already said already, family is your biggest source of inspiration. You know, um, my family is, my parents are uh, definitely, and I have seen my parents, you know, struggle to send me here as well. And then my dad told me one thing, make sure you are successful and don't do anything wrong. Always obey the law. So that thought, that one line always stayed in my mind whenever I, you know, used to sad, used to be sad in, in my student life or and even now as well. And that triggered me, okay, I need to do something in life, I need to study hard, I need to become something in life. So that was a big source of inspiration, yeah, as always. And apart from that, you know, always the love and support of your family, from your friends also, you know, it goes a long way because it's, they inspire you to do something new in, in life as well. And the classic example, you know, I heard one more inspiration story in recent days, which keeps you going as well to do more for, um, uh, for community, is... Uh, 
uh, there was a girl in in India back in India, I think, uh, in uh, and she was going in a train, and uh, somebody you know tried to um, molest her uh, in the train, and then she, what she did, she jumped out of the train, yeah, and to escape uh, the culprits, she the trains two trains going on, and then she cut her legs, you know. Yeah. Yep. And and then somebody uh, took her to hospital, and then you know, uh, and legs were gone. And then uh, you know, somebody took her to hospital, and then asked her, "What do you want to do in life?" Uh, that time she decided, "I wanted to climb Mount Everest." And that that lady did climb Mount Everest, and I won't name the person, uh, but uh, you know, uh, that's also an inspiring story as well. It's all in your mind, you know. It doesn't matter what you do. If you have positive attitude in life, you only one no matter what is the thought of doing something good thought of something doing positive is always a win win doesn't matter you do it or not but i think then somebody told okay you have already already thought about this thing climbing mount everest you already won you already climbed and she did climb she she is a motivational speaker she inspires people yeah. these days. absolutely yeah. absolutely no you know absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah um now coming to like so so far i have understood from our conversation that it's you strongly believe and actively believe uh, in terms of kind of give and take and giving is a little more from the take so let's take that journey now conversational journey towards that um give few kind of examples of your giving back to the society or community where maybe close by where you live or a little far off maybe give a couple of classic examples yeah, yeah absolutely i think that is a good point as well as i said you know i started um, uh, helping society or friends and families you know um, back in my student life as well or, or first time i got a job so i thought that small small steps i can help and those small small steps gone bigger and bigger uh, when i start participating more and more with social um, agencies and also not many not organizations. So currently, you know, uh, I have played a, a huge part. I'm an executive committee member uh, for one of the biggest religious places uh, in Australia, and uh, there I have um, enabled a community to celebrate most of our community festival along with the volunteers, along with the committee members. So we we are helping others to come forward and celebrate their culture and, and festivals. And I'm also um, uh, advisor as of now for Victorian Multicultural Commission's uh, Regional Advisory Committee as well, uh, where uh, we do raise community issues, any you know racism, any prejudice happening. So we have raised those issues with VMC so that they can form policies to help migrant communities as well and have a society which is more inclusive and more cohesive as well. And uh, in addition to that, I'm also an advisory committee member for Melton City Council's Intercultural Advisory Committee as well, formerly known as, as CALDAC, uh, where again, within the Melton City Council, I represent the voice of our uh, migrant community or Indian community as well, uh, and make sure we are looked after. And if anybody having an issue, I do raise with the relevant authorities in that meeting as an advisor, and also formulate policies which, uh, which helps us. and. Uh, Again, I'm doing one more uh, uh, role as well. Uh, I'm the president of, currently I'm president of uh, Melton Interface Network, which combines 34 different religions together, 34 different mm -hmm. communities together in the, in the well, Melton City Council, which means, you know, we are, we are Hindus, Sikhs, Baha'is, Christians, Christians from different, different backgrounds, you know, we are Muslim, uh, you could be anybody, uh, have your own faith. So we're trying to respect each other uh, we're trying to bring awareness about each other's faith as well and we arrange a lot of tours of uh, religious places where uh, all the group together goes and uh, different people for different faiths and understand each other's uh, religion so that they no misgivings and they can respect more and more and have a social society which is you know inclusive and no hatred so that's going on that effort is really going on uh, together and during that the two different different uh, organizations we have helped people who are homeless we have helped people who are uh, victims of family violence and we have also helped people who are you know a vulnerable society giving them groceries giving them food arranging even the community dinners 
through Melton Interfaith Network and along with Melton City Council, we have arranged four or five uh, community dinners uh, in the council hall, uh, which was well received and up to 150 to 200 people attended. And food was uh, kindly created by Shri Durga Temple uh, in Rock Bank. And when I went to the event first time, uh, Vipul, I saw a lot of people from, you know, uh, not just only migrant background, a lot of people from a local, uh, you know, Anglo background, very yeah. people. And uh, when they saw the full meal, three course meal, they were crying. And, and I, when they were crying, I was also crying as well. Sometimes we take things for granted, you know. Yeah. We thought the, we got meals, everybody else has a meal. But you will be, you know, amazed to see, or you'll be surprised to see, there's still many families who struggle to put just food on the table. So when they were enjoying food, I was digitally so happy and I was crying with tears, with happiness tears, saying, at least through our organization, we are able to help a few families. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and then uh, and the bond is still there with, with those families. When I when I meet them some functions, they still feel very unhappy. And then I wanted to more and more during that line as well to help people, you know, where possible. Um I'm pretty sure you, you, the place where you're living, or or the suburb, or the council where you're living, you've been living for a, for a little longer time, so as to understand the suburb or the place or the council, you know, a little more deeper. So, what are what are the current challenges that the suburb or the council is facing, or the ward is facing, which has not been attended or looked after or resolved for a while? What are those? Like you can say two or three or four challenges. Yeah, no, it's, it's very good. Um, uh, overall, uh, I, I thank Mel City Council and uh, all the city councillors and officers who are uh, working to for the betterment of uh, of a society. But having said that, you know, not not everybody is perfect. There still there are some gaps. Yes. So yeah, and uh, as you know, Mel City Council is one of the fastest growing uh, mm. council in Australia or Victoria or Australia as well, along with Wyndham. So it's mm. very very fast growing. When you grow faster, especially growing faster because the migrant communities are moving in as well, a lot of families are making this as, as their home. Mm. So that brings you know you need to have out of box thinking, you need to have infrastructure, which we sometimes we like, and sometimes you need to take a step back of the growth. If you keep doing growth, unlimited growth, you will see we become like some foreign countries where the buildings are there, but nobody lives there. Yeah. So my funda is my aim is my policy is to work with council mm. to have a sustainable growth. You mm. do grow, fair enough. But if you grow and make houses, if there are no schools are there, if there's no kindergarten there, if there's no footpath, you know, roads, no bus stops, how are you going to survive? Yeah. So that's one of the aspects is is definitely grow. But grow with with required infrastructure as well, with required services as well, so that we can service you know enough people to go to schools, enough people, enough kids to go to parks. We should have enough you know hospitals as well. We are we don't want to burden on the existing infrastructure where even everybody else will struggle as well. And a classic example is you know when I go to station, like I moved to this locality in 2003. Yeah, in oh. 2003 I moved from uh, living in Brisbane uh, sorry earlier than Melbourne City. The two Sunday built the house and moved here. At that time, you go to your station, for go to CBD for work, no traffic. You go to car park, even nine o'clock, ten o'clock, the car park is available, you know, empty. Now, if you go at 7 a.m., the car park capacity had doubled. Mind you, car park capacity has doubled. Government has put in double capacity already, council and, and government. But still, you go seven o'clock, car park is gone. So what do you do? And then then we don't have you know, enough transport, local buses as well. And the frequency is like very, very much 45 minutes, one, one hour, mm -hmm. which doesn't fit with the timetable for your work or school as well. So children are struggling. So this transportation is also one, one issue. Mm -hmm. Another thing is, I'm not sure why um, Northwest councils have a highest uh, um, rate. If you, could, if you look at Southeast, their rate, uh, council rates are much lower than, than ours. Um, because we calculate based on the house value. House value goes up, it goes up. So I want to bring, uh, I want to advocate for uh, for issue, which is to review the how we calculate our uh, rates as well, so that we stop this unfair increases as well. And now during COVID, uh, the council has put a stop. Okay, this year they have frozen the rates, but I want to advocate strongly, not so one year, uh, we should stop uh, freeze 
uh, or it increase basically for the next two to three years so that we can enable local businesses and local families to come out of this financial crisis yeah. which is enabled by COVID so that more and more help can be given as well and one more issue I want to highlight is uh, people uh, which is cute to my heart is, is the safety and security of our, uh, our residents as well yeah. uh, last time when I stood for election as well I raised the issue with the uh, uh, government and council both advocate strongly. I know this is a state government issue, but we have to advocate from council first. Yeah. So advocacy is to have a 24 by 7 police station at Carolyn Springs. Mm. I know a lot of people will debate saying the sources are occupied here and there, but I think for safety, there's no harm. We don't have a nearby a, a station which is 24 7. We have to go to Sunshine or Melton. And oh. mind you, this is the fastest growing community. Yep. Published growing very, very fast. So if we should go for help, we should go for safety. And more, and more patrols as well, you know, to make sure people are safe, people are, you know, the crime wave is not there. Earlier, if you remember two, three years back, there was a lot of, uh, you know, crime happening and people were feeling very, very unsafe. And I heard from local residents and also from media outlets as well, many residents moved out of this area to go to Southeast because they're feeling unsafe that time. And I hope uh, that is not the case anymore. And uh, I still want to advocate strongly uh, for a 24 7 police station at Carolyn Spring, uh, as well as more police patrol so that our locality is feeling safe uh, as well. Uh, and also, one initial point could be adding more security and CCTV cameras as well, which council can and monitor. Uh, so we have a recording if any, any crime does happen in streets. So we know you can go back and check the recording as well. So these are a few, few of the issues. I got many issues I can, I can keep going on. Uh, maybe we can uh, uh, continue and discuss uh, maybe next time as well. I have got a full agenda of issues, but these are the main issues I want to ensure you know people are taken care. Of. And one thing definitely I want to say is uh, uh, being a migrant community, uh, I also want an inclusiveness as well, where migrants are given the equal share in decision making process, and uh, and we do get you know required help to celebrate our functions and, and festivals, and enough programs should be there to help migrant communities, uh, especially our, our seniors, when, when they come here, there's nothing else to do. They, they get bored at home and, and gives mental stress as well. So uh, I will advocate strongly with council if elected is to have some programs for seniors as well, where they're occupied and, and they contribute constructively to society. Yep, 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 yep. So um, three, I think I could gather one is balancing uh, between the growth and the gap of infrastructure. Second, uh, evening out the rates uh, with a proper basis of a calculation so that it's fair. Third, safety for the local residents uh, and safety by means of having a, a, a police station, patrolling, cameras, uh, vigilance amongst the residents as well with the support of this uh, uh, infrastructure. Absolutely. Now, yes, you're right, Melton uh, and that part of geography is growing at a little faster rate and I think it's been growing since last five, six years at a very faster rate. Um, people would have voiced their concerns, uh, you've part of the council. There are other people, uh, other teammates like you who are working hard to, you know, make the things better. Um, is there is there a difference of opinion amongst the team members? Yeah, might be a stupid yeah. question, but what I'm asking is, yes, there there will be differences, but how do you resolve to move forward? Because that is going to be the case today, tomorrow, and day after as well. Uh, absolutely. I think, uh, as uh, you know, uh, I mentioned earlier as well, when I mentioned about the police patrols and 24-7 and police station as well, there will be arguments uh, in, in the uh, community leaders or other people as well who's thinking, you know, maybe other way around. Um, maybe saying, as of now, maybe it's not a requirement. But again, you need to constructively uh, argument with your pros and cons. So I got a lot of pros than cons. So uh, again, you need to bring them along uh, because it's journey together. It's not just my journey or one person's journey or second person's journey. It's a journey of the community. All these issues are relevant to the community. So uh, what I will do in that, that session is, is I will 
do my uh, study and I will work with them to alleviate their concerns or alleviate their uh, concerns why they are saying uh, this should not be done or, ex or should be done in a different way. I'm more than happy to uh, take a suggestion for them. Do they have any other option B, option C? Uh, as long as, as the end goal of safety and security is met, I'm okay. And uh, that could be more police patrols, that could be something else. So again, uh, I always take people along and uh, take their views, take the suggestions, and then and then uh, take them along and then make a, a constructive policy to advocate strongly. So maybe not one, always one option doesn't work. And there could be always multiple options and we can combine those options uh, to make it happen. Yeah. So you are, you are advocating uh, uh, constructive complement or constructive compete or constructive teamwork so as to move forward together though there might be differences in thoughts or the, the strategies or the way of doing things or uh, altogether a disagreement will still work together absolutely it's a good, absolutely good thought. It's yeah, a good absolutely thought. I, I said people uh, we could have a different thinking of doing things but end of the day the end goal is still the same yeah. so as long as your end goal the same betterment for the community, growth for the community, and help for the community. We can bring along all the people's thoughts and then have a constructive, you know, decision making process. Right. Um, if from this conversation, or even when you are uh, uh, talking to people through digital media or maybe in person, uh, where and how can people reach you? to share their voice or share their suggestions or share their concerns or give some ideas to you as well, where and how can they reach you? Absolutely, very, very good point, Vipul. And again, I'm uh, once again, I'm thankful to Lotus uh, you know, uh, World as well uh, for giving me this opportunity. Uh, as I said, you know, I got a Facebook page, um, Gary Verma for Cambridge Ward. So that's my Facebook page. Uh, so any issues, concerns they want me to address, they can send me a, a message there. They can leave their comment there. They can, if something is, is very personal, they want to share and discuss. Uh, I'm more than happy to take, you know, a, a personal message as well um, um, on my page. And also, I give my email as well, Gary Verma Seven at Gmail dot com. I will repeat again, Gary Verma Seven at Gmail dot com. They can send me email as well. And I will uh, show full confidentiality uh, as I, I do always when I deal with the community issues in the past uh, uh, seven to eight years. And I will work my best to address that concern if it's within uh, the council area. I will definitely raise with the council authorities. If it's, I have to advocate strongly with the uh, other department of state government or federal government, I'm more than happy to reach out to them as well. And I want to help the help community, be it within council, be it uh, at other level as well. Right. Um, towards a conclusion uh, of this episode now, uh, speak out your heart to your word. What would you want to say? It can be brief, it can be a little long, doesn't matter. Just speak out your heart to your yeah. word. Yeah, basically what I'm saying is uh, to all the uh, listeners uh, of Lotus World and also people who will be you know, looking at this is no matter who wins or who loses, always keep doing your best for the community. Always help everyone. And uh, if you want to criticize, I can see because many candidates have put their hand up uh, in local construction, which is a great step as well. Uh, end of the day, uh, if you want to do criticize the policy, I think do a constructive criticism for, yeah. for candidates, you know, and give them feedback so they can improve and they can have a policy. Judge them on their policies. Judge them on their past community work, you know, and vote for the person who you think has done something for the community in the past, have a track record, not just uh, someone who just uh, never to be seen before. And when the construction come, you know, you see the new name is coming popping up for the community it's your call at the end of the day it's democracy we are welcoming everyone to be part of this voice um, but uh, i think voters are the uh, final decision makers so i would say uh, your vote is your voice use it wisely and be constructive be uh, you know give ideas and uh, end of the day encourage social creation end of the day say same we are same people we want to help each other so as long as we have social harmony as we have a cohesiveness 
and uh, we give constructive feedback that will definitely help um, shape up our society much much better going forward so it, it, uh, again i i read or i'm adding a little bit of my words as well maybe here that you are a resource that people the community should properly communicate proper, properly utilize for their own betterment so they also should have a clarity as to what they want not only in the immediate future but long term also so they should think they should have clarity they should plan and they should come to you and discuss and make use of your presence in the world for their benefit does it make sense absolutely absolutely i said i'm i'm one of them um, i'm part of community and i'm one of them so and i know being a family person i know being working in in a an it company who what how to save a job how to help a local business so i've seen those faces uh, and i'm one of them so i can definitely uh, you know can help uh, so as you said you know being part of the community is always better than being outside of it. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we, with these words, we are towards conclusion. Thank you, Gary, for your time on this Sunday morning. I much appreciate um, the, the communication and the insight that you've given, the person who you are have been kind of conveyed. And uh, people who will see this definitely will get a little closer to you to uh, better know you and maybe they come forward to you and ask for the help or give suggestions uh, viewers what we will do is we'll put the little bit of details into the description uh, like what gary has said his page his email id so that you can reach to him and take your thoughts to him and make the community and the world a, a better place to live for long right so thank you gary once again for your time and uh, we'll catch up with you soon. Uh, uh, till then, you take care of yourself and keep working hard. Thank you. Yeah, yeah thank you, Vipul. And uh, thank you once again to uh, to you and, and Lotus World. And the only last uh, message to community is, you know, I know this is a tough time of COVID. Stay positive and uh, be safe. Stay at home and uh, obey the local uh, government guidelines um, because they're all working for our safety. And keep well, stay safe. Thank you very much. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.